right, well, that's what I thought I'd done. Let me try again. I think it's worked. Hooray. I've got a black screen, but I think I'm live anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't worry, we are live, yes. Great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, it says that my internet connection is stable. That's bad news, isn't it? Probably. <laughs> we'll we'll see how we go. Right. Yeah. We're interested. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. Well, I can't see us, but. But I, ah, here we are. Right. Well, I can't see us, but I, ah, here we are. Let me mute this. You ready? I am ready. I was checking. Hello, hello. Yeah. Don't worry, we're all going. We're hello. Going. Right, let's go. Yeah, sorry. Is it... It's distracting me because I can't um, see what's happening. It's just, it's a bit slow, but I'll carry on. Brilliant. <laughs> oh, good. thanks. I'm getting some nice comments, some nice reassuring comments coming through. That's good. <laughs> so um, I'm Katie. I'm the founder of Polyphony Art. This is my first Facebook Live, in case anybody can't tell. Yeah. <laughs> um, and this is Martin. Hello. Introduce yourself, Martin. Introduce yourself. Uh, I'm head of digital at Night Classical, which is um, an agency, with, a multifaceted agency, I suppose, to use a nice long word, which is we do have an artist management division, we also do touring, and um, I run the digital arm, which is... Um, on one side, kind of in-house marketing for our artists and tours and projects. On the other side, um, I make videos and websites for anyone and everyone, mostly musicians and ensembles, orchestras, choirs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You get the idea. Taking things. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> um, Martin and I wanted to get together and talk about digital for musicians. Um, for sort of obvious reasons, really. Um, unfortunately, the situation isn't very good for gigging musicians at the moment. A lot of work has been cancelled. Um, a lot of music not appearing live um, and, you know, a lot of money being lost for musicians. Um, many musicians and organisations are turning to digital um, at this point. So we thought it would be useful to um, share with you some tips on on digital for musicians. Um, so we wanted to forgive me. Um, where should we start? Should we start? So live stream concerts from home. <laughs> yes, which is certainly by far, as you probably already noticed by now, like the most popular way people are keeping musically active and doing stuff during this rather unusual situation. Um, which is great. I mean, I think um, we were talking earlier, there's kind of two, forgive the pun, streams to this, um, which is you've got your big orchestras, opera houses, etc., like Berlin Phil, who are making their library of things available free, which is brilliant. Um, and then on the other hand, you've got, yeah, jobbing musicians who are stuck at home and they're sticking their phone in the corner and they're playing something which I think both have equal value and kind of have to be thought about in a separate way, really. Um, and we'll probably come on to this later, I think, won't we? But the whole kind of elephant in the room on that with how do musicians make money when you can go and watch, anyone can go and watch the Berlin Phil for free. Why should they pay to see someone in their living room playing a cello? Um, but I think they're two different things. Um, but yeah, we'll come back to the money thing in a moment. Um, so I think the main th the main sort of focus we wanted to make for this, which was kind of basically for those musicians who are tech savvy and are already doing this, that's fantastic. But there's probably loads out there, probably even more, who would like to, they don't have really a clue where to start. Um, and just to let people know that how easy it is really. I mean, you can literally, you can do this with a phone as most people are doing. 
as you probably noticed. Um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, you can do it all literally from a couple of clicks on your phone and away you go. Um, so especially if you already have an audience on there. Um, you can obviously get more technical than that if you want to start using a separate mic, separate camera, etc. Um, I won't go into the details of that, but if people want me to, let me know. Um, but uh, yeah, I think using a phone is, especially if, you, yeah, if you've got a, a more recent phone, if you're worrying about video and audio quality, firstly, I don't think people should be too worried about that. I think it's a kind of prerequisite in this scenario that it's about just sharing music. It's not about the worrying too much about the audio quality or anything like that. Um, I think it's, it's a sharing thing. You know, when people are stuck at home on their own, um, it's not just about being able to listen to people make, making music. It's about kind of joining in. And that's the kind of great thing about social media, really. It's the kind of community element of it. Um, it's not just a passive thing, which going to a concert all can be to a degree. Um, you can really get people involved doing it this way. And the kind of DIY ethic of it, I think, really enhances that, which is something you don't get from the whole kind of Berlin film arm of it, so which is partly why they're such a different, you know, they're two separate things, two separate arms of this kind of surge that we're seeing, I think. Um, as the, um, in live music as well, really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so what I mean, I can go, I can get more technical on that if we want to, but, um, I would say for anyone who's thinking of doing it and they're not sure, just do it. Just try it out. You know, just put your phone in the corner. Um, uh, this was a separate topic we were going to cover, wasn't it? About whether to do pre-recording or live. It is very at this point by. Um... Yeah, I'd love to hear what you think about that. Um, I th one thing that we, I, oh, I certainly haven't really seen, or at least if I have, it's not been obvious. Um, is rather than literally going live and doing something live. Um, which people might be apprehensive about for all kinds of technical and you know, performance reasons, is pre-filming something and then streaming it, um, which uh, is equally as easy to do, technically. Um, you can get some free software called OBS, Open Broadcast Software, um, and you can stream a video file very simply to Facebook, YouTube. Um, so the benefit of that being you can record something with a nice mic and a camera if you have that at home, but you might not have the bits of kit that you need in order to connect that to a live stream, which you do need some specialist kit for. Uh, you can pre-record it, edit it if you want to, get a little video that you're already happy with, which you could then obviously just put on your YouTube as you might otherwise do anyway, but you could then stream that video. Um, and then you can do other nice things around that, like if you're not performing live in the video, you could join in the comments and talk to people about it. You know, if you were going to do a, do a cellist mm -hmm. and you want to do a bark suite, you could then have a live discussion whilst the video is playing about your interpretation of it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I think that's something which I think that's such helpful. a good idea and something that... Sorry? It adds a uniqueness to the online performance. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think, yeah, the benefit, the benefit. To, um, to have something, to have a quality to the performance that you can do the online performance. Yeah. It's the kind of middle ground between the two streams we're talking about. You know, the very, very DIY phone in the corner and Berlin Phil. And there's, there's quite a long way between those two, obviously. But if you have which a lot of people do, if you've got a nice DSLR at home, which does good video, and you've got a microphone, um, which you can record separately. You can do that in your own time. Um, if you've got 
I mean, you need you need some editing software probably, but there's some good, very good free editing video editing software out there, um, which takes a bit of time to learn, but people have a bit of free time now, so that's quite a good thing to learn. Um, it's good. DaVinci Resolve would be the one I'd recommend for that, which is free. Um, you know, you could get into doing some semi-basic um, self-made performance videos and then stream them live, as well as put them on your YouTube channel, that kind of thing. Um, so, I mean, the other thing to remember is that, yeah, it's not just for the moment. You know, once you stream something live, the video is there. Once you've made a video, it can live somewhere forever, theoretically. So, um, yeah, I think there's there's more than just the instant little social sharing moment, as good as that is. Um, with this, I think there's lots of different uses for it, which people need to consider. Um, it's just about finding it's a longer term. Yeah. Value, isn't there? Yeah, exactly. And it's 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 about finding the setup that works for you the best, really. If if all you have is your phone, then um, well, again, you can pre-record with that if you want to, and then send the send the file from your phone. Um, You, know, you, you can do both. Um, so it's a question of, I think people would, whereas artists would generally be probably concerned about putting out something which isn't absolutely perfect, understandably. I think in times like this and with this kind of scenario, we need to lower our concern threshold for that kind of thing. And um, it's just about enjoying the moment and bringing people into it and sharing and just keep making music. Um, however, if it's, it's probably, a, the, probably the best thing is to do a bit of both, I would say, and see what works. And it depends on, um, depends on the kit you have, it depends on the audience, what you think they would like best, where, where your audience is um, from an online point of view. Um, and just kind of balancing all those kind of things up, working out what's best, but it is, the main thing is it's very easy to do if you're worried about doing it and don't know where to start. Um, assuming you have a social media presence, if you don't, then you should, this is a good time to start one. Um, it's literally as simple as opening up a new post, clicking the live button in most cases. And that's it, really. So give it a go. Yeah. Um, it feels to me like um, with many self-promotion or marketing there are different um there are different sort of levels that you can do it at and they might be for different things yeah um and this situation has freed people up to try these things um where they might not have done otherwise yeah exactly um i think trying things is is a good way to is a good point actually it's not just um you know, I understand and certainly working for a company that is um, a management for company as well, we, it's it's very important to think about the, the quality of things you're putting out there. Um, however, I think this kind of side of things is more about building community and building an audience and the things that social media is really good for, you know, getting your personality across, which is equally important for artists these days. Um, it's not just about being another pianist, another cellist. It's what's unique about you, not just your playing. It's about you. So this is a really brilliant way to, you know, open yourself up in a way to get people, let people know, find out a bit more about the person rather than just music, um, and not be too worried. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And if you want to, yeah, no, exactly. I think it, in some ways, hopefully, this my. Um, take the fear out of taking the plunge on this for some people um yeah because it's more necessary now yeah i mean it, it... Um, and if you do want to make money because obviously um we need to think about that don't we because it's it's yeah. lovely to put out lots of videos um and increase your social media reach and, and all of those things but you know musicians are, are largely out of work and we need to look at um how they yes. can how they can attempt to be performing essentially um mm. so 
we were going to talk about ways to um, monetize this, hopefully. Yes. <laughs> Which and I think there are ways. Yeah. Kind of I mean, uncharted territory. It's, you know, yeah. I mean, there, there's a whole kind of political correctness element to it at the moment, I think, which is perfectly fair enough. Um, especially when you've got people like the Berlin Phil putting everything out for free. Why should you, or how dare you charge your concerts online, that kind of thing, which I, I, again, again, it's a separate issue. I think it's not, um, to, to be fair, to the Berlin Phil, it's a wonderful gesture, but they can, yeah, let's be honest. Um, whereas if you're a jobbing cellist and you're stuck at home, you can't necessarily. Um, I, think, I think there's a balance. Yeah. You know, I think, I think, and obviously the other point in this climate is that not everyone can pay and therefore they maybe shouldn't be penalised when they might really need a bit of music. Um, so I think there's a, there's a, it's a way of finding a balance. It's about mm. um, not putting up a paywall, which there's no other way through. I think, I think the best balance is giving people a choice. Um, so if you're doing a live stream, PayPal is a brilliant way to just to let people donate money if they want to. Put a little link at the bottom of the post, or if you're putting it on your website, put a button, um, and then people can donate some money. And I think if you do it that way, you you'd be surprised how generous people are. Um, whereas if you purely make say, I agree. Support. I think the narrative. Hello. Sorry, the lag is causing us to uh, not not be sure when the other one's finished speaking. But I was just going to say that I think um, putting music into the world at a time when people do need it, yeah. Um, but also being clear about the fact that um, that you may at the moment, to me, that feels like the narrative that allows people who are in a position to be generous and supportive to be those things yeah. um because i think there's a lot of sympathy um from from supporters of music about that yeah um and i think those are the kind of two arms of the audience that we're looking at at the moment i think it's, there's just as many hopefully just as many people who are in a position to give money to people who are struggling um but still want to consume music who are probably the kind of concert going audience and then there's also fellow musicians who, who um, you know, there's a community element to it as well, who probably aren't in a position um, to do anything financially about it necessarily. Uh, you don't, certainly don't want to exclude them. I think it's just as, a, just as important for musicians to build their own community in this, um, where it's not really about money, it's about solidarity. And then, but there is also ways of making some income at the moment, which is incredibly important. Um, which people shouldn't be scared of taking advantage of. So it's about finding the balance between the two. Um, so I think, yes, PayPal donations are probably the first and obvious easiest thing. Um, if you have a PayPal account, it's very easy then to just get a link um, to put that in your feed uh, on the post for the, for the stream. Um, any technical things, by the way, I'm not going to go into details if anyone wants to. No, they can ask or email me, whatever. Um, we can, I can tell you about that. Um, I think another really good one, which um, if anyone hasn't already seen what Gabriella Swallow is doing, the cellist, um, on Patreon, should definitely go and have a look at it. I think it's genius. Um, Patreon is a really good platform. It's been around for a while. Um, and it's used by all kinds of people, filmmakers, artists, anyone really who has some kind of products or not well not even products but kind of a creator's platform for making money for people to buy into what they do um and you can create kind of tiered membership levels so uh, and then you can offer them whatever it is you want to offer them um for that like it's kind of a more the more they pay the more access they get kind of idea um so you could uh have one tier where you do um they just get access to all of the live streams that you do at concerts. You have another one where they can then next tier up, they can send you requests and you'll play those. Um, next one could be a, a private 
teaching sessions, one-on-ones, I mean, it, it, literally anything you want, basically. But uh, the idea is that you know the, the higher the level of membership, the more um, the more that the more value they get, and the more they pay. That's the idea. Uh, it can be anything really. It could be like a two pound a month, and you get access to all the concerts. It could be. I think at the top is a thousand pound a month. I'll come around to your house when you can and do a live performance for your, you know, for your family. Anything, anything, literally anything. What Gabrielle has done, which is really clever, is um, to kick. It, like she started the channel just now, and then like, the first thing she's done is um, musical Mother's Day cards. Uh, so for people who sign up for that particular tier of package, um, she'll make a little musical performance. And people can, you know, for their mum, and people can give that to them, which is really nice. Um, so, literally anything and everything. And the great thing about that is that, you know, people can pay what they can afford to pay, what they want to pay. Um, and you can decide what they get for that. And it's, but it's a community as well. It's a great thing about that. Um, you know, it's people, it's not just a one off, people are paying a monthly membership to get constant access to stuff. Um, so while this is a great time to set one up and make a bit of money from it, you know, it can be the kind of thing that people can create now and it can last on for years potentially, you know, as long as you're able to keep it up. Um, you can build a whole fan base, call them a better word, on there, um, which you can serve for years and years and years. And it's, yeah. then it's a whole new income stream. Um, so I would definitely encourage people to go and have a look at that, patreon.com. P A T R E O N. Um, what other things are there? I mean, teaching is a kind of an obvious one, which I wasn't really going to, because if people are already teaching, then they're probably already figuring out ways to do it online, which is essentially just doing it through Skype is probably the best way, or Zoom, which is what we're using now, which is very good. Um, I was going to say other online platforms are available, but I'm not sure if there really are many others apart from those two. Um, I mean, if, if people are struggling with how to do teaching, though, I think um, Zoom, Skype, WhatsApp, video, audio will work. Um, Skype is probably the easiest thing that most people know how to use. Um, um, but, 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 what was the other thing I had on my list? It was slightly left field one. Um, freelance networks. I mean, this this may even go. Sorry. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> um, it's a slightly left field one. It may or it's not necessarily always going to be in the realms of just playing music. But I mean, there there are, there's a huge network of websites out there like People Per Hour, Fiverr, Upwork, um, which are networks for anyone to hire people who specialize in doing something to do any, any number of things you know so it's complete um the huge marketplace of, of freelancers and jobs where i mean you can post jobs products if you like you know i will do x for x money um and then there's also a load of people posting jobs which people can pitch for so um you could potentially go on there and you know, I'll record a custom piece of music for your corporate video, your advert, that kind of thing. It's probably a good one. Um, compose it or just... Yeah, yeah really good uh, idea. That kind of thing. Um, there are... What is that? There, there are networks for more... Specifically for kind of creative... Um, creative people like this, this thing called creative commission which is a, it's a slightly more serious way if, if you like it's companies who are basically putting things out to tender um so it's used a lot for sort of web design and video production and that kind of thing but uh that's worth looking at for any kind of music related because there's the whole industry of people who compose and or just perform bits of custom music for Films, video games, videos, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, which musicians could potentially. Um, I've got a comment here. Um, any suggestions for free video? Ed free video, what's the <laughs> Free video. Um, 
Sorry, I lost you there. Free editing. Editing. Um, free video Vin editing. Yes, DaVinci Resolve. Definitely the best free video editor ever, as far as I'm concerned. Um, it, it'll take a bit of time to get used to if you've never done editing before. But if you've got a bit of time to invest now in learning something new, then that's well worth doing. Um, it's made by a company called Black Magic Design, who are an Australian company who make a um, huge number of uh, uh, broadcast tech equipment basically um they also make cameras which are amazing which is i, I use almost exclusively um certainly not paying me to i wish they were say that um and they make they've been making uh davinci resolve is a, a software which was originally just for making just for doing color grading but it's an, it, like a industry level like hollywood production houses use it to do color on films but it's evolved over the years into a full-on video editing software they have a hugely expensive pro version, but they've fairly recently made a free version, which is, considering it's free, is incredible. Um, beyond that, it's your very basic iMovie type things, which are- That's very useful. Oh, it's, it's handy for quick basic stuff, and it's very easy to use. But if you want to do it properly, I would I'd recommend people have a go at DaVinci. If, if they can't, which is understandable, then um, iMovie is always the good one if you're on a Mac. Um, I forget the PC name now because it's been so long since I've used the PC. Uh, Windows Movie Maker, it was, wasn't it? Which I assume still exists. Um, essentially the same thing, very basic stuff. Um, what else is there? Um, Video editing. Sorry, go. Great. Shall we? Um, was there anything else? Uh, I think we've covered our list of points that we said we would shall we open it up to questions or is there anything else or uh let me just check this let's talk to you <laughs> yeah anyone who's got any questions feel free to pop them in the comments anywhere and we'll come to them we haven't covered uh -huh. actually other kinds of live videos oh yes well this this kind of uh, um yeah it's probably most relevant to the kind of Patreon thing of um, rather than just doing little concerts or that kind of thing. Uh, you could do all kinds of stuff, which kind of will help, you know, build your audience and engage with them. Um, you could do a little talk about uh, what we were saying before, if you're a cellist and you're playing a bark suite, you know, you could also do a little 20 minute talk either pre-recorded or live about, you know, your interpretation of it, that kind of thing. Or, I mean, literally anything. You can talk about anything you want to talk about. It doesn't, have to be, it doesn't even have to be music. You know, maybe you uh, really like making pizza and you want to talk about that. Okay. Um, uh, you could do, like, kind of like we're doing, you could do a, like a, a recorded interview with someone um, remotely either live or stream it, you could do, um, what else could you do? I have a little list somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, oh yes, warm up tips, that kind of thing. Um, if you're a musician, I think it's great, like practice tips. Um, which could be like a whole little series of videos. Um, actually, I filmed some of these with uh, Matthew Key, the trombonist, who's going, who wants to do a, well, he already does quite a lot of this, and he'll be doing more of, um, literally get walk, walking through all the warm ups he does, um, showing you how to do them, why he does them, what they help with, that kind of thing, um, which any musician could do quite easily, I think. Um, yeah, film them self practicing. Um, Come to me and get to watch their rehearsals. Is it always gives you a new insight into what about the music is kind of challenging or interesting? What yeah. they like. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know the bits that make them go, oh wow, or um, that's really really <laughs> for a reason that you don't necessarily see as an audience member. I always find that kind of thing fascinating. 
Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, masterclasses in a sense, um, maybe not in the traditional format of uh, yeah, a, a musician watching the student play a bit and then interacting, but you could you could record a like an online course essentially of how you play a particular piece or set of pieces. You could record five or six of those or four. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the sky's the limit, really. You know, it doesn't have to just be a concert. But you I mean you could have a theme of a whole series of videos around a piece or a composer or etc cetera, etc cetera. anything really um such a isn't there any good um thinking about adding kind of value to the content which you just can't do in a normal live concert situation yeah yeah precisely exactly it's about bringing the audience in which you can't do in a live concert to really um I mean, only in a very limited way, which, uh, you know, this is what, this is what's so good about social media. Um, mm. You know, and if you're doing series, series of videos, you can, you can get feedback from people on what they want. Mm. And then you can, you can create stuff. You don't even have to necessarily plan it all out in advance. You can let people chip in with what they'd like to see. Um, you know, you could put a poll out for what kind of uh, um, exercises or rehearsal tips, practice tips, would you like me to talk about? And then you could do a little series of videos on whatever people most want, that kind of thing. Yeah, um, yeah engage the community. Um, we have a question here. Is there any way of solving delay problem if you connect with two musicians online? Um, the question it depends on it partly depends on what software you're using um I, just to expand on that question um are you what is it you're trying to do with the two musicians online are you trying to literally play to play along with each other or is it a kind of um a teaching thing um if you're playing yeah, so along, sorry. that a lot of my clients have asked me about is it was just, is it well that's something that my clients have been asking me about is so that you can rehearse together or even perform okay um that is a very good question i off the top of my head i can't think of anything that would be completely foolproof uh, I mean, it's a lot of this kind of stuff, as you're finding out with this, uh, is it's very dependent on your internet connection um, as to how good the upstream of video is. Yeah. yeah. Um, hmm. Um, it's a good question. I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but I will. I might have a think about that, um, Graziana, and get in touch with you. Something I can think about. Um, what... I would say it's a discussion that um, most of my clients are having, and uh, I... they haven't found a piece of software that deals with that. So anyone who invents in... one now. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. <laughs> a good thing. So they're, they're trying to rehearse together, is that the idea? Great. Oh. Sorry, we lost you there. Is it? Are they? It's try for rehearsing together. Is that what? Um, I think we've lost you, Katie. The idea that, that you know, in the face of kind of not not being able to get even a couple of people together, um, it might be um, it might be good to be able to actually perform with two musicians in different places but rehearsing together definitely also helpful <laughs> yeah um no, i don't th th this is one of the problems as we're literally finding out live uh especially at the moment when people are absolutely hammering internet um services 
is that you know, there's always going to be a bit of lag if unless you're on a really good network um so it's a tricky one i think the only thing i can think of really is um pre if each if each musician records their bits and then sends it round and you can put it it's not ideal i know um mm, yeah uh you know you it's almost like a a backing track if you like um you can, and then you can rehearse to the pre-recorded video potentially um not really i mean i think if you're using skype for this i would try zoom i think zoom is generally better for multi uh yeah more than one participant on a video mm -hmm. um I would give that a try, but I, I'm not aware of anything that's going to be amazingly foolproof, to be honest. Certainly not if you're on a fairly iffy internet connection. I, I would probably recommend trying pre-recording and then playing along to and see how that goes. Um, Graziano, is that useful or is there any, do you have any other follow-up questions? Please feel free to type away if you do. <laughs> um, anything else? Um, I'm not. Has anyone else got any more questions? Um, not seeing so anything. The, um, the thing that you posted about Anna Fiddy, she's great. Yeah. She does really cool stuff. Um, oh, brilliant. Oh, that's brilliant. Okay, so. The link that we put in here below, Anna Fiddy from Alternative Classical, who are a really great little organisation, um, have created a little online marketplace for this kind of stuff, which is absolutely genius. So definitely go there. Okay. Sorry, and my colleagues just putting the uh, the things that you've mentioned into the comments. Oh, got the answer. That's. Uh... That's great. That's really helpful. Cool. Well, um, I think if there are no more questions, we'll maybe round it off. Um, mm. Obviously, yeah. Well, yeah, the live will stay up, so we can always check back on the comments. Um, yeah. We'll still be able to watch this later. Um, thank you so much, Martin. Um, for anyone watching, do have a look at what Martin's company does. It's really, really brilliant and quite necessary at this point, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um and yeah polyphony arts will be back next week with more um content that we hopefully will be useful for you at this uncertain and unprecedented time so all stay safe and well and um have a good weekend thank you mm. <laughs>